What is going on guys? Big welcome to you all to our channel. We are Team Crushing the Meta and you're here with D-Boy. So we are back with another deck profile. As you have seen from one of our last videos, we talked about the premium builds that you could build for Spike Brothers. And if you're new to our channel, then of course you would not know that I'm a big Spike Brother fan. And I played the game again from the start with my favorite clan, which is Spark Brothers, right away from the first booster box ever, about uh, what 10, 10 years ago, I think, something like that. So it's crazy. I have been keeping Spike as my main clan since then. And now people are asking, like, yo, D Boy, what decks could you build for Spike and Premium? What, what, what are the decks that we could make? What are the decks that we could make and enjoy? Well, there are different builds that you could see and I made a video about it on the channel where I explained which build you could make and how the builds look like. One of those builds is this, the Rising Nova Turbo slash Aggro in between Vanilla, whatever you want to call it. I like to call it the Balanced Turbo. Why does it called Balanced Turbo? Because it balances between Aggroing and Turboing, it balances between the amount of Vanillas that you have it has a lot of things in it that makes the deck very consistent, and at the same time very flexible and also very, very, very fun to play. All right, if you're new to the channel, subscribe to the channel, like the video and comment. And uh, yeah, let me just take you through the deck. This would be a long deck profile. So if you guys want, you could pause the video, you could get some snacks and some drinks and you could just chill there and watch the video. All right, we will go through the grade three lineup and then we'll come back and explain how the cards work and also why did we make these choices. As you can see, the main grade three is pretty much Rising Nova himself. Uh, this is the boss monster of this deck and most other decks for Spike at the moment. Why is this card so good and why is he at four? Why is he the main grade three in this deck? We'll get to talk about that in minutes. The secondary grade three, the secondary bright target that you want to go into is of course Bad and Dragger. And that's pretty much it. You have the seven um, bright targets in this in this deck that you want to play. The other grade three that we add to the deck is of course Jelly Beans. Jelly Beans give the deck the consistency that it needs to search the right cards to the hand and uh, makes the deck also more flexible, but at the same time stronger because again, it gets more consistent. Why do I say flexible? I will show you the two targets that Jelly Beans could give you, which means with that you could turbo and aggro, or again, you could turbo or aggro. You could turbo and aggro, or you could turbo or aggro, which again, I will talk about throughout the video. For the grade two lineup, we talk about Spike Bouncer, we have four of him in here. The same goes for Breach, also four copies. And the two Vanillas that are deadlies that you could search out with your Jelly Beans. The first one you could search out with the Jelly Beans. The first search target. All right, then we go to the Great One lineup. And for the Great Ones, of course, we add in the one Tempest Spear because it could add the Vanillas to your hand, but it could just flip something from your GZ on face up for the one Counter Blast, which is good enough. Then we add the two copies of Wonder Boy, the three copies of Tear, the one Zazan, and then we get into the five Vanillas that we add in this deck. 15k shield Vanillas, four on one. Again, I'll explain why. All right, the trigger lineup is very simple. We add in the uh, the eight draws, being the four Vanillas, of course, and, and the PG draw, the Sentinel draw. And then we add in the four deadly heals and the crits that you could stride with. All right, then we will talk about the starter, which is of course Mega Trainer right here. The old Mega Trainer, which could add a great one to the hand, could add a great zero, which pretty much would mean he could add Zazon, or he could add the vanilla to activate Zazon, or he could just add a heal trigger to the hand. For the strides, we play the one GB8. You could play more, again, depend on how the format is looking like and your locals. For now, I only play one, but again, it's pretty much up to the format and what decks you're playing against. If there is a lot of Kaigoro, if there is a lot of Narukami, if there are some decks that could stall throughout him, if the new 
the 100 million trigger power will get into premium as well then you do need a second copy of him so let's say that you play two i will tell you which other cards you could put in here as well the second card that you want to put in at two is of course miracle ace himself one of the most important strides that you could add to the gb8 deck is him why because he gives you the draw power engine that you need why do i say engine and no draw power by itself because this card draws like hell i mean come on pushy really especially in the combination that you could do it with zazan and tempest right now it would mean that the first time you go into him you could just draw two and the second time you go into him you could draw five or six or seven right away which is crazy and insane to add that much cards to your hand right away next we have the two copies of agrius um again he adds in the aggro um uh, value to the deck that with him you could pretty much finish your opponent off earlier if you feel like destroying them on the first stride also he does give you a draw he does bind and call cards so there are a lot of things that you could do with him you could activate the zazan skills two times in one turn if you bind and call it with him so it would mean you get even one more gp face up which is good so that's also pretty nice about agrius then we add in the one copy of uh, Vermeos. why is he in here because rising is, is in here and because we have rising this card becomes more effective because rising could split the two markers and with that your opponent needs to take three damage in that turn one from the force one and two from the force two the two columns otherwise they they would have to guard and if they guard his skill will go off although you don't really make lots of soul in this deck you actually use soul you still could get his skill off and he does flip so if you get your opponent off guard off guard then this could actually pretty much kill them or he, you could just pressure them and then he will give you gb the other cards that you run in here are of course the two copies of cyclone so that's for the strike if you want to play only one copy of the gb8 then you have space to play the fermios or to play the Fermi, uh, the merendol again up to you to play which one you like i actually like to play the merendol and i just skip on fermios because fermios only good in two matchups nubitama mega colony only those two and normally i don't really use him for any other uh matchups so i don't play him i just play one gb8 one merendol so my GB, my, my G zone looks actually like this for the Crane Elementals, one Merendol, two Cyclone, and then for the other strides we have the Fermios, we have the two Agrius, we have the two uh, Violences, and only the one GB8. For the G Guardians, you have to play the complete package, which means the two, the three copies of Linus, the two copies of uh, Gus, and then two any other um, Crane Elemental. G guards because you want to create mental space up. You could play another create mental by taking one gust out as well if you want to. Pretty much up to you. I do really like him because he gives you the recycle power. Although in this deck, because you have the grade two breach, you recycle most of your pieces by him. But sometimes this will help you to recycle breach himself back to your deck, which is also good because sometimes you lose him in your soul or he goes to the drop zone by soul blasting him. All right. Now we have talked about the whole deck, we showcased the deck, and now it's time to get back to the to every card and talk about it. So let's explain also their skills, right? So we have Rising himself. Why is this card so great? And do you really use his full ability? But actually, no, you don't. You don't even use the name, which is Rising. And there are some cards that you could add to the deck that could help you out by him having the Rising name like Fro Frograder, like Fake Bomber, like the Sprite Folder, like Acrobat Verdi himself. But for now, I would just only talk about the cards that we have in the deck. And then at the end of the video, I will showcase what other cards that you could put in here. So Rising Nova, Exceptional Expertise Rising Nova has two abilities. The first one gives you both markers when you ride him. So you get Force 1 and Force 2. If you go turbo then you put them on the same circle if you go aggro then you split them because then you have the full value of Agrius, full value of vermios all right now how about his second ability you don't really use it do you the second ability is the ability that gives him 
the the soul blast one and you target two grade threes and he gets his, their ability well you don't you don't really use that ability in in this deck you actually use only the first one which is the ability that gives markers what is the best way to go into your grade threes which is the best grade three to write first actually it's bad and dragon the first ride you want to go if you're going turboing and chilling you go bad and dragger you get force one and then after that you ride into rising you get force one and force two you put all of them on the same circle and bad and dragger will come out of your soul retire a whole column and with that you could get rid of cards like only so we get to the bad and dragger right away he has two abilities the first one is by counter blessing one and putting a regard to the bottom of your deck he gets a crit and plus 5k that ability is very good by itself why because the cost is important first he gets a crit but again because we now have force one and force two on the same circle doesn't really matter your opponent would not take that attack but he costs you to put a rare guard from your field back to the deck which means you could recycle stuff that you have in your field like tear like wonder boy like whatever but pretty much those two <laughs> like sazan if you want to reuse him with, with that you pretty much that's already very good because you recycle stuff and he gets power and a crit which is also good his second ability is also very 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 important because we don't play Fermido in this deck or this is actually more consistent than Fermido is the fact that he could retire a whole column which means he could get rid of powers like only that your opponent have put on the field if they're playing a deck that could put that before they get into the um, their g-guard because of course there are some other decks that could put on any from with their g-guards so the three bad and dragger very very important card to add to the deck then we get to talk to the jelly beans uh, the jelly beans could add the heal the dudley heal and could add the the, the dudley great two um the dudley great two of course could you could use that with zazan so you pretty much will be able to aggro to put pressure on your opponent but you also get with that one gb that you normally will get if you use this to add the heal to your hand so it has almost the same effect but if playing the zazan early is good because you will have gb1 early right away which means that you'll be able to use your flip g guard on the first attack that your opponents make and you have no limitation uh, whatsoever whenever you reach grade 3 and they reach grade 3 so it makes the deck very deadly if you go first. If you go first, then you pretty much would be like, okay, um, when I write to my grade three, I already have a GB one because of Zazan. And then when they attack, you need only three heals, which is not that hard to get in this deck. Three heals to get to the GB eight right away. If you go second, which means that you get the first stride. If you have using Zazan throughout the game till that moment, you will be able to reach the GB8 on your next turn with only two heals on hand. Again, very, very strong, which means that your first or second stride will be the end of your opponent because there is no way in hell they will survive the GB8. So that's the grade three lineup. For the grade twos, it's very simple. You could, of course, play the, the, the Deadly Mounty as the vanilla that you could search to your hand. Lots of people keep asking me why play him, why not play the 10k shield? because you could search this card with jelly beans very 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 important to make your deck as consistent as you can and that extra 5k shield i know that it could save your life but again it's more important to add to the consistency of the deck that's why we play this all right then we add the one of the most important great twos that they gave us um i don't know about wishy and i don't know about this but this card is insane it recycles it draws it goes to soul it does everything that this deck wanted it's just like uh <laughs> what, what what could i call it it's like a wonder boy and a barrel in one right that's that's amazing and it's insane so this card at four is something that i think most people just understand What's his ability? Well, pretty much uh, when he attacks a Fangard, you put one of your normal units from your drop zone to the bottom of your deck and your opponent has to intercept with whatever they have that they could intercept with. And then at the end of the battle, he goes to soul and you draw. Why is this good? Because you pay the costs 
which is putting the normal unit from the drop zone to the bottom of your deck. And whatever happens with this unit, if it goes to the soul by the skill of the GB8, if they retire it by using Denial Griffin or whatever, it doesn't matter, you always will draw because you have already paid the cost. So you could actually attack with this, put the GB8 on him, the skill of the GB8 on him. You recycle something from the trap zone. And then at the end of the battle, you use the GB8 skill to put this into your soul with something from your hand to call something to your deck. And then you draw from his ability, which is perfect because you don't want to draw the card that you want to call with him, with the GB8 ability. If this sounds a lot, <laughs> then uh, just wait till the end of the video because I will show the, the combo that you do. All right, then we have, of course, the Spike Bounce. Now, people could ask me the question, oh, okay, what could you change about the Great Two Lane? Well, the thing that you could change is, of course, the Spike Bouncer. I am a big fan of Spike Bouncer because the card add to the flexibility and the consistency of the deck as it's good in the early game if your opponent gives you too much counter blasts you could use this when your opponent rushes you this is the card that helps you to get the advantage Help, helps you to use all of those counter blasts to get more shield value to get draw power to get whatever you like so of course he has the first ability which is on place counter blast soul blast and you check the top cards of your deck the same great as your finger and you call one of them and you put the rest on the bottom of your deck in any order the second ability is the ability that whenever he attacks at the end of the battle you could counter blast one put this into your soul to draw a card for his ability you do need to put him into your soul because that's part of the cost so you could not use the skill of the gb8 and the second skill of this card at the same time that doesn't work it's different than breach the other card that you could put in here is of course the four copies of the detonate barrel which works perfect in this deck and also works very good with sprout works very good with uh, uh ted or wonder boy so this is the card that you could put in the deck and with that you will use less counter blasts and also you will use less tier so you'll be focusing on him and him and the Wonder Boy or the Big Blow Ted. Why am I not playing this strategy? Because this strategy works in a format where your opponent does not give you much Count Blasts to work with. So you don't need Count Blasts because his ability only requires you to Soul Blast himself. And because you have the GPA that puts cards from your hand to the soul, because you could ride into him, because it's very easy to put him into your soul, it's very, very, very good. And also it's because it's in a deck where you play Rising, and with rising, you already have a huge crit two. You already have the critical two. So you don't really have to make a lot of mini attacks. You want to make one huge strong attack and this helps you. But in my experience in the current formats, I like Bouncer more because Bouncer is more flexible as a card. And again, when your opponent rushes you too much because some people think that the way to win against this deck is to rush it and give it lots of counter blasts, and that's when this card shines. Alright, now we talk about the great ones and what other cards that we could put in here. So, first of all, we talked about the Venelez and the Zazan. Alright, so why do we play this 4 on 1? Because this card is a 7k. So 7k means that you can undercut your opponents and with that it's up to you to choose to give them damage or not. So it's very important to play cards in the deck that are 7k, 6k, um, so they are weak and they could not hit your opponent. The same goes for tier, very important card to play in the deck. And then we have the Zazan, you could search to your hand, you could use it. The only thing that you use Zazan for or Tempest in this deck is actually just to get the GB1 that you want for your G-Guards because your flip G-Guards have the GB1, which again, I will talk about in a minute. So is Zazan really important in the deck? Well, no. It is, does he have that uh, toxic thing that's, that people hated about him? No, not really. The only thing that he does is he gives you one GB and that's it. He doesn't does he doesn't do anything unfair in this deck. Actually, he doesn't. He just makes the deck a little bit faster. He acts as an extra heal that you have in your hand. That is it. The same goes for Tempest. You could just take all the vanillas out and do not play them and play more Tempest. And that one GB that Tempest give you 
is enough. That's it. That's that's the only thing you want to do. So why do I, as I call myself one of the spike for the experts, why do I play this deck? Why focus so much on the vanillas? Why play Zaza? Well, because this also adds the shield of the deck. Remember guys, that this is a 15k shield. A 15k shield. Do you understand what that is? That's the normal G guard power. A 15k shield is a lot. Remember that you could just put two of these out there. That's a 30k shield right there. With your strides, or I mean the grade three that you have, that's 43. 40 fucking three. That's a lot. <laughs> so, Remember guys, that these cards that you put in here are not just stupid vanillas. These are the cards that will save you in the early game, in the late game, and whatever game, during the whole game. These cards have huge shield value. So, the deck has a very balance between turbo, aggro, vanilla, non-vanilla, attack, defense, power, shield, all of that is in here up to you you could just put this on the field and you will have a huge attacker especially if you have already flipped two cyclone this is a 17k by itself or an 18k by itself which was not easy to deal with especially if it's coming twice each turn because of agrius but at the same time if you put this on the field you're already giving up 15k shield so you'll, most of the time you'll just put them on the field with Sazam, of course, because you're not losing anything and you're drawing. Again, when you draw, you get easier chances to get to your heals, but you're also giving up shield if you're calling these vanillas. So again, there is more to this deck than it seems. It's not that easy just put everything on the field and attack. Then we get to the next card. So we have the two Wonder Boy and we have the tier. Again, as I said, tier is important because it's 6k, it could undercut. It's good to answer the Honoli, which is, of course, one of the cards that would deal with this deck, Honoli. Also, tier, of course, gives you the counter charge. So, in the ideal situation, or yes, let's say the ideal situation, you get the counter charge 5. But in the most situations, you get the counter charge 4, which is good. I mean, counter charge 4 is insane. So with that, you could counter charge 4 with tier and you could put tier back by the skill of Breach. You could tier, put tier back by the skill of Bad and Dragger, but different skills, you could put tier back to your deck. Wonder Boy is a card that could put cards back to your deck except tier. Wonder Boy could put anything back to your deck except the tier. One of the most important cards that Wonder Boy could put back to your deck is of course the heal trigger itself. If you have healed in the early game, and then you heal one more time, so two heals in the early game, which means you only have two heals left in your deck. And mostly, you need three for your combo. So Wonder Boy is important, and sometimes you will search him out with your Mega Trainer just to put him on the field and recycle that heal so you could draw it back to your hand by any other skill. Yep, that's again one of the things that you have to remember about this deck is that everything you put in here is important we are, of course also have big blow tet uh, big blow tet you could also use it the only problem with this card is is that it doesn't put heals back to your deck because it puts higher so what he does is he say put a grade 2 or greater card from your drop zone so again he could recycle other cards but not that he also get the 10k power while Wonder Boy get the 5k power, but that doesn't really matter because if you're going 18 or you're going 13, if your opponent gets a trigger, they go by 10 anyway. So again, it doesn't really matter if it's a 13 or an 18 or 33 or 38. It doesn't really matter. That extra 5k, the same as XL1 and XL2, that extra 5k doesn't really make that big of a difference. I would rather have a card that's more flexible like Wonder Boy. All right, then we have, of course, the Acrobat Bird. Other great one that you could put in the deck. A very, very, very good card and add to the consistency of the deck. This Acrobat Verdi and the new Acrobat Verdi. Both of them have different uh, function, functionality. <laughs> That's not even a word, maybe in Dutch. But uh, <laughs> they have a different uh, reason to add in the deck. This one, 
gives you the rising to your hand. So, back in the old days where we played this deck, we played the deck with four star, rising star, and four jelly beans, and that's it for the great threes. Why did we do that? Because whenever we had this card in our hand and we didn't have the rising, we just put this on the field, show us, show the jelly beans and search rising to the hand, which is a super good strategy because it's consistent, right? It doesn't matter if you don't have the right grade three, you'll be just using your starter to search this card out. You put this on the field, you show the jelly beans and you add rising and you're good to go. Why don't we play him in this deck? I actually don't really have room for him. I could take out one vanilla to play him. That could work. But uh, yeah, I actually didn't really find it necessary because we have the bed and dragger and we have the rising. And with that, we have seven cars to get. And if we add the vanilla into the deck, which means it's easier to activate Zazan, from Zazan, you draw two. And with that, you basically most of the time will draw a great three to your hand. So that's the reason why I don't really play him. For him as a different case, he doesn't only make the deck good by adding a great three to your hand, but remember he could also add the jelly beans, which means that you could add to your right target or he could add you a heal. So this card is also very, very good. Why don't I play them? The, the most important reason why I don't play them is I don't want to call them. I don't want to give 10k shield just by calling it and hopefully I get a grade 3. And I just don't want to have a card in the deck that's only 5k shield and its only reason to add it to the hand is of course to use it with rising. Although you could stride with it so that's also good. So you could add a one copy of it in the deck and that would work amazingly and you could just take out one vanilla or one wonder boy to do that. That, that could work and I will 100% understand why. I'm these All the cards that I'm showing you are the cards that you could definitely put in the deck. These you could put in if you don't want to play the spiking, um, I mean the uh, spike bouncer. So if you take him out, you put him in and if you take him out and you could take out a tier or at least take out one tier, keep two and for the Honolulu matchup or take out two, keep one for the Honolulu matchup, whatever you like to do. Uh, and then you could put Ted or more copies of Wonder Boy because they work great together. And I already explained what these cards could do for the deck. Of course, there are lots of other cards that you could put in the deck. I have the small binder right here, the binder that you guys also know. Um, and there are lots of cards that you could put in this um, in this deck to make it good or better. Uh, like we have here, the Juggernaut, of course. We have lots of other cards that you could put in here, but we're not going to talk about those because I showed you the most important ones. All right, so how does the deck work? What what's the what what do you do? Well, pretty much, of course, you have the Mega Trainer, right? So that's your starting thing guard. And from that moment on, when you go to the Great One, you want to go to something that you're right, which is um, a less than the 8K, right? Because mostly your opponent would ride into an 8K, sometimes a 7K, but usually never a 6K. Maybe if you're playing against the deck that plays something like this or Shadow Paladin that sometimes could ride into a 5k, uh, then you could, with, even with these, you sometimes will hit them. Depend on the matchup. So let's say that you're going, you're playing, right? So you have the starting thing guard, you flip, you go, you start your turn. At that moment, when they flip their thing guards, that's when your knowledge of the game come in handy. Now you have to make a choice. Do I go aggro? Do I go turbo? Do I go in between? How much damage can I afford to give them? One, could they do a lot with one? Like clans like Dark Regular could do a lot with one. Clans like uh, Luar Shadow Paladin could do a lot with one. But some there are some other clans that basically with one count last, they would not do that much. Like. Pale Moon, you could afford to give them one damage. I mean, it's okay, but you would rather not. So that's when you will ride into, if you go second, you will ride into something that's a 6k or 7k. You swing and you not boost. And if you get the trigger, you give everything to this. And with that, your opponent would not get damage. If you go first and it doesn't really matter whatever you ride into, keep the vanillas in your hand, ride into something like this 
or this or anything that's not a vanilla at least that's not him because you want him later on because you don't have soul all right so let's say you ride into the tier which is one of my favorite ride targets because they will hit you and they will hit you for one or two damage after that you will go into your second ride so you could ride the spike bouncer and give up the soul if you don't have a Zalzan or if you have the Zalzan you could also ride into something different like a breach but let's say that you have a breach and a spiking uh, or a spike bouncer in your hand um, or a vanilla depend on how much vanilla is your hand in your hand because that makes the big difference so let's say that your hand is looking like this right so you have the two vanillas for Zaz and you have these two then what you do right now is you ride into the spike bouncer you don't use his ability you call this card or if you don't have him in your hand you just use this to get him to your hand you call him you activate his ability by soul blasting one calling these two to the field and make the column that you want to make with like this or just make it like that that's also good and then you draw two cards you flip the cyclone and then you call this from your hand and you switch right this is perfect because right here you could attack these get power of course and then you could attack with this and then you could attack with that you use this ability to put this back to your deck which is good and then you put to the soul and you draw and you already have soul right that's a possibility if you don't have zazan yet you could also use it the next turn if you go first if you don't want to push your opponent you just ride into this use his ability get something to the field attack with it or boost with it or have it as a defensive option or whatever you like to do and then next turn when you ride into your grade 3 you already have an extra soul to use for zazan so again you will use his ability and zazan's ability again pretty much up to you so let's say that you have done all of that and now you have one card which is face up in your G zone, which is pretty much will be of course your Cyclone. Your one beautiful Cyclone. Actually you have two, but yeah, let's say you have one face up. All right, so now you ride into grade three. Where are you? Let's say that you have uh, the ideal situation in which you go into Bad and Dragon first, or you just want to skip Bad and Dragon and go to uh, to rising whatever you like to do doesn't really make a big difference depend if your opponent plays only or not depend also on what you have in your hand it is okay to write rising and then next turn write rising because you get more markers but it doesn't really make a big difference because most of the time if you're going turbo then you will go force one and force two but the two force twos you will split them of course but usually this is not strong enough to hit your opponent. So you want one strong field. So let's say that you do it and you get the uh, the beautiful cute um, forces right here. And then the next turn you just go for this one or, or whatever. Like if you could get into another rising you will do it like this. If you get into bad and dragger you will just do it like this. Right? But what you normally want to do is you go to bad and dragger first. And you get the force one on one side and the next turn you ride on the top of him you get force one and force two and you put everything in here and he comes out of the soul retiring everything and chilling there right so that's 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 what you want to do if you go vermios then you pretty much want to go like this if you go agrius but you don't know if you want to finish your opponent yet or not then you go this and then next turn you ride into him and then you get the second one and you put it right here right there whatever you just need to make the choice to split them or not uh, depending on what is your strategy what do you want to do but what I want to explain right here is not the markers let's say that you got rising and you got these two what I'm trying to explain right here is what you do next because you already have one GB if you go first now you need to get three heals to your hand because if you got three heals to your hand which means when they attack you you use the three flip G guards to flip one, two, and three, and you're already GB7, you're good to go. How does this work? Well, pretty much you need to use the first G-Guard, you could use it by its own, because if you use G-Guard number one, then you flip only one card from your G-Zone, and then you have three cards with only two G-Guards, and the second G-Guards that you use, you need to use at the same time. So you do a double G-Guard, you flip two, and now you have four face-up G-Guards in your, in, in your G-Zone, so you could not use more G guards, but because these are on your guard circle, and most of you guys already know this, because these are on your guard circle, they don't count as cards in your G zone. 
So whenever you get to the first one, put this from your hand, flip something. Now you have one on your guard circle and three in your G-zone. If you do not use the second one right away, you will never be able to use it because at the end of the battle, he goes to your G-zone, now you have four, you will not be able to G-guard again. So what you normally would do, you use one G-guard and now your opponent would need to make a choice. Do they attack you, you use two more G-guards or they stop attacking you and then it's up to you again. Depend on if they have more attacks to make, depend on if you could guard everything, you could bluff sometimes. If you don't only have two but they think you have three, you bluff with this. But again, it depends on, on lots of situations. But mostly what you want to do, if you could guard everything, then you just put three G guards right there. Here you go, I have GB7, what you want to do next is up to you. You want to give me damage? Sure, why not? They think sometimes they, they reduce the cards you have in their hand, in, in your hand, so they just attack you until you have to guard one or two attacks. That's good, just do that, I love that because you give me more counter blasts, more counter blasts to work with. Most people would stop right there and not give you more counter blasts, but even with that, you already have a strong like uh, column right here and you could destroy them. What happens if you go second? If you go second, then you don't really have to use Zazam until you get to your first stride, right? Because from that moment on, when you stride, you will stride into your, most of the time, as long as you have the Count Blast, you will go into violence. And now you could use the Zazam to flip something or the Tempest to flip something and you have already GB1 which is again of course this beautiful cyclone then you use his ability after using all the cyclone uh, or all, all the zazons and all the tempests that you have now you use his ability to flip one more and then you have more gb so you draw two cards because now you have two so that's why zazan and tempest actually make this card better because even during his turn you could use it to have more gb sometimes you could also go to the GB8 while you have GB6 and because you could still use Sazan or Tempest that turn as long as they have them, you have them in there you have them in your hand uh, you could reach the GB8 during the GB8 turn which is crazy it's just something that could stun your opponent right there because they would not expect that that's also a possibility so yeah if you do this then you at the end of the turn you will end up with three cars face up in the G-Zone if you have used Zazan and Tempest, then you end up with four. The only extra effect that you have from this is the fact that you will draw more because of his ability. But usually you will still need the two G guards. If you have three, you need two flip G guards. If you have four, you still need two G guards, but one flip and one non flip, which is whatever you like to use from these three, right? Okay, so I explained a lot um, and I could go one more hour to talk about this or even longer one week to talk about this or whatever because there is a lot to talk about when it comes to this deck. Of course, I could showcase the deck in, in, in a match, but I don't want you guys to copy my playstyle the exact way. What I want you to do is I want you to toy with the deck a little bit, take the deck, build it differently, enjoy it, and sometimes try to have a match against friends or on area and see how the deck works. Again, this deck is made for my playstyle. There is a lot to do in this deck by balancing, by making every card is very, very, very much thought out. There is a lot you could change which will make the deck also very different. Even changing one card in this deck would make it very different. I will give you an example. When we talk about the triggers, I talked about the 444, right? So we have four, 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 four. Let's say that you want to change one great one in this deck. And you would think, okay, now what I want to do is I want to add this because I find myself getting the jelly beans most of the time to my hand and no rising, no bad and dragger. But I really want to ride into rising. So you add him and with him just one copy is good enough because you could search him up with the starter so if you do so then you have one less vanilla right so let's say that you don't take a wonder boy out because you love wonder boy you take out this 
you just take out the light element because I don't know why he's in here, I don't like him, I don't have him, I'll take him out to play this card. If you do that, then what you want to do in the deck to keep the deck balanced is you have to take one crit out to play one extra vanilla draw. So you will have the same amount of vanillas but also the same amount of extra cards that you stride with because this is a card that you can stride with and this is a card that you took out that's a card to stride with. Do you see what I'm trying to explain right here? It's like there is a there is a balance in the deck and when you change one thing or two things or more things you are changing the balance that the deck has and sometimes you think that you're making the deck better but sometimes you're not so whenever you change something one the balance will change right so you have to do something different to make it back again this only is in my playstyle so in your playstyle it's different that's why i said take the deck and toy a little bit with it make it your own all right this is of course the build that i play with the um with a spike bouncer of course there is as i said the other build that you could play just on the uh, the barrel there is the, the the build that plays even more vanillas there is a build that plays the incremental gray three uh there is a play a, a build that plays more into the pure turbo which is without all the um credimentals and without all well you do play tier but uh, without the vanillas that could also work you have also a build that plays uh, him and uh, the uh, spike bouncer because why not I mean you could play the 12 grade twos and you'll be good as long as you don't play vanillas or you don't play the vanilla mechanic that's good as well so again lots of builds that you could build throughout the deck that plays the turbo gb8 as a new turbo when you go aggro there is a whole new different concept there is it's a very 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 different than this deck uh, I explained in the video that I talked about at the start of this video, the link will be in the description section below so you guys could check it out. But if you guys want the full explanation for that deck as well, I could do a deck profile on that one. I think I already did one on the channel not so long ago, so I could also put the link of that deck below. But if you guys want a more new up-to-date video, I could do that. Alright guys, for you guys who stay till the end of the video, thank you, thank you, thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoy these kind of long videos. Again, I could do a short video or a long video, but I thought it's time to go a little bit more into the deck and explain more. Thank you for watching and thank you for tuning in on our channel. Thank you for all the love and support that you give to our channel. Lots of thanks, but you guys deserve it. Alright guys, till next.